Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we had things set up this morning that people want to join the church. That, forgive me. We're going to do it next week or tonight. One, and I don't want to stop the flow of the Spirit here. And uh, people joining the church is a great thing. And, and I'm blessed to have more people wanting to join. But please just bear with me here in the Spirit today. We prayed Tuesday and we prayed. Uh, Friday night and Friday night fire and I preached on the fire burning in all of God and talking about we cannot let the fire go out because when the fire goes out we're so helpless and we got to have the fires burning in the altars and on the altars of God and, and people prayed around these altars and we prayed over these services today and and uh, we pray that God would touch people as they gather today in this house and and that's what God's doing right here in His presence. People are feeling His touch in His presence. And Lord, I, I want to just thank you because God, one more time, your servants in worship led us right into what I'm preaching on today, God. And Lord, it's, it's nothing less than uh, the Spirit working together to bring us, Lord, into the face of your glory. And Lord, we just ask you, God, to help us to, to be so sensitive to the Spirit that we will only move and say and do only those things that you would have us to do, Lord, in the Spirit. God, we don't want to be a distraction to anyone. We don't want to move, God, unless you tell us to move. We just want to be very cautious, God, in the Spirit here today. And we ask you, God, to just touch us together and let us feel such a glory and manifestation of the fire of God that we'll be forever changed in your presence. Lord, we just thank you right now for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, in this service today. Remain standing as we open up the Word of God today. I cannot encourage you enough as people of God that said you have dedicated yourself to this house and you have said, I will be here in the services. You know, Thursday night or Friday night, Friday night fire is, is designed for prayer and praise and worship. And we didn't have any special singers that I mean, uh, Sophie sang, and, and any time you can hear her sing, it's special. I mean, I know she's my granddaughter, but it's the truth. You know, she has an anointing on her life, and, and uh, you know, when the Spirit of God gets on her to sing, chains are broken off of people. And you can feel it in the Spirit. And Brother Kate sang for us. And, and God just touched in the services Friday night, and you missed it. That's all I can say. We had 30 people here, and you know, I was kind of broken hearted about that as a pastor because I want to see the house full. Not for my reason, but for us to hear the Word of God together and to be touched by His name. So I'm encouraging you to be back tonight because I've stayed in His presence all week to prepare what He would have for us tonight. And I believe it will be a totally different touch and anointing tonight than it is this morning. I want to preach this morning on no substitute for His glory. No substitute for his glory. First Kings chapter 1. I'm going to give you a moment to get there. I'm First Kings chapter 1. And I'm going to begin reading in verse 1. When you get there, say amen. So everybody can be there and read with me. Remember, I, I, I spoke to us and read the scripture Friday night on Second Chronicles about when, when Solomon paid, prayed the 65-word prayer, the Word of God said that the glory came down. The fire of God came down. And the place was so full of God's glory and the fire of His presence until nobody was left standing. They bowed in the presence of God and the glory of God. Boy, do I hunger to see that day. When the church will return again to claim his glory. And to say, God, you can't do it without you. And Lord, we don't even want to do it without you. We don't even want to try to do it. I don't know how leaders in the churches can do it without God's glory. 
how pastors can preach without his glory. What they're doing is just giving a word. They're not really ministering in the spirit. And what happens is when you minister in the spirit, chains are broken. When his glory comes down, things happen. I mean, how many men of God said when his glory came down, he, they fell like dead men in his presence. John was on the Isle of Patmos, and if he's on the Isle of Patmos, and he's been through difficulties and trials and testings and chains and beatings and shipwrecks, and he's on the Isle of Patmos, and he said, I saw God. Oh, yes. Yes. Isaiah said, I saw a strain fill the temple. Yeah. And he said, I felt as a dead man before him. Yes. I think that God wants to bring his glory back in the house where we'll fall as dead men. Yeah. Be slain in his anointing. So when you get up, you're forever changed. The old man dies. You know, uh, that song is good, but you know, I, I have learned that the old man really ain't dead a lot of times. I mean, somebody came up with that song and it sounds good, but how many times has the old dead man arose again? I mean, get out here in the traffic and all you have to do is the dead man comes to life. Go to Walmart and let somebody just run over you. And the dead man comes to life. Just let somebody in your congregation or somebody in your house stand up against you and the old dead man comes alive again. So the old dead man's got to go back to the glory. And when the glory comes, it'll cause you to get so prostrate in his presence that you, you'll never be the same again. And you'll hunger to go back there again and again and again. I'm just going to take my time. I feel the Spirit here. I'm just going to take my time to preach on His glory. Because there's something about the glory of the Lord that's not only seen on the outward man, but something is transformed in the inward man. Amen? No substitute for His glory. I want to read verses 1 through verse 4. It's amazing how the Lord will speak to you when you study His Word. And draw things out that you've never seen before. He said, Now King David was old and stricken in years. And they covered him with clothes. But he get no heat. Wherefore his servant said unto him, Let there be salt for my lord the king, a young virgin. And let her stand before the king. And let her cherish him. And let her lie, let her lie in thy bosom that my lord the king may get heat. So they sought for a fair damsel throughout all the coast of Israel and found Abishag, a Shumanite, and brought her to the king. And the damsel was very fair and cherished the king and ministered to him, but the king knew her not. Now that wasn't left out on purpose. That was so you could understand that David is old, Old from fatigue of battles, worn after the battle with Bathsheba, the affairs, the lying, the murder. Now he's old. Now he can't get heat. They didn't place this young virgin there for sexual activity. That's not what that was for. It was so he could have heat in his body. You know what her name literally means? And I was shocked. Her name means the fathers have erred. Oh, my. I'm, the fathers have error. Does that tell you anything? The church is looking for the heat in the wrong place. You can be seated if you can. There is no substitute for his glory. Now wise men went seeking after someone to help David to get heat. And oftentimes when we hear this or see this, and I don't know if you'd ever saw it before in your life, but when God began to open it up and reveal it to me, I have an understanding that we, we know that when two lie together, it creates heat. Uh, the Bible talks about that. And how can, you, uh, how can you come together without it creating heat? And we know that a man and a woman, when they're married uh, in, in the spirit and when the flesh, uh, uh, that when they come together and consummate, there is heat there and it produces sexual activity. But that, that's not what the scripture is talking about. It's saying that they sought for someone to bring heat to David in his old age. And I want to share with you what the Spirit has poured into my life. That how often the church has lost the glory 
and we go after men's opinions how to get the heat back in the house. Well, I want to just tell you there's nothing that can produce heat except the glory of God. Oh, I feel the fire of God in here this morning. I, I mean, it's on top of my head, I'm telling you. And I feel it too. Because understand, there is not one thing that can be produced in the flesh that will produce the glory of God. And how we need God to come back to America and come back to the church and see His glory manifested where we can't stand in His presence. Where angels are encamped about the house. I, I believe that. I, I believe if it was in the biblical days, it comes for us. If the angels of God stand around and protect, then they'll come into the house and stand around the walls to protect the house. I believe they're already here. We pray it. We believe it. We call it done in Jesus' name. We call protection on the outside of this building. Because we're living in an age where men and women come into the house. Uh, you know, the pastor down in Omega was sharing with me. Uh, you know, they have three men that have guns on their side. And, they, and they're able to carry them. They're, they have the license for it. Uh, but it, down in Tipton, there were four Muslims that walked into a church. Never had been there before. And they all four distributed themselves in four different areas of the church. And walk through the church. We're living in an hour and a day when the church better be alert. With the fire and the glory of God. Because if it happens anywhere, it can happen right here. Someone can walk in uh, with some anger problem or some depression problem and carry a gun and blow people away. Uh, and, and we need the glory of God so we can have sensitivity to the Spirit uh, and we can hear the Spirit and be on guard. And that's why we pray, angels of God, bring your protection around this building, God, uh, that nobody can enter in this place uh, without falling prostrate in the glory of God's mighty anointing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abshag is, is, is the Bible says it and it's true. She was beautiful. She was beautiful. And they stress that. She was beautiful. But understand, I don't care what anybody says. You can have personalities that are debonair. And that's what we're looking after today. When men call for people for revival, they don't call for somebody that has been on their face before God. They're calling for the personalities to shine. Uh, but I want to tell you, there's no personality can produce the glory of God except the personality of God, the Holy Ghost. Come, oh, God, touch me right here. Woo! Hosea. Oh, my God. How many personalities will come and go? I'm not against looking good. Look the best you can is all I can say. <laughs> I try. I try to do the best I can. But understand, if I came as good looking as I could be, I still couldn't produce the glory. It is the God that comes into the house through yielded vessels. Not just the pastor. Not just the evangelist. It is people that have sought God, stayed in His presence, and came into the house hungry for more of God to be on display. Not with their minds and their hearts somewhere else and say, I don't want to go to church, but if I don't go, the pastor's going to call me. My God, David said it like this. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Why do you want to go there? Because God's glory was there. There's a scripture that always just baffles me and makes me shout at the same time. And it said the little birds found their house in the sanctuary of God. Wow. Wow. Birds had a drawing to the sanctuary. Isn't that something? And you can't get people to the house of God. And birds got more sense than people. They know God's in the house. So they want to build their nest for the, for the glory. Wouldn't it be awesome if we build our nest right here in the house? 
I mean, God, I'm not missing church. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be dedicated to you where your glory can come on me. Because there are lost people out there that need the glory to be on display in my life. God, let the glory come again, God. There's no substitute for your glory and your power in the house. Personalities are not going to get it done. Sister Debbie, I want to thank you again for this chair. I think I've told you three times, but thank you again for this chair. It becomes better than I ever thought it would. And you get a little older, you just need to sit down there. I can't stay very long when I'm preaching. I've got to get up and jump up and down like the jack in the box. And I get to fill with his presence. I mean, personalities will not do it. I've seen men go to churches with personalities and their hair combed just right, slicked back, Sharp looking. And the young women in the church are what there say, Whoo, good looking thing he is. They couldn't even get into the service for looking how good looking he was. There's nothing wrong with being good looking. Amen. What woman wants a husband that looks ugly? I mean, want a good looking man, don't you? Amen, you young single women. Amen. Amen. And they don't want some of you the way you're looking around full of joy. They want somebody full of joy, not dead, not lifeless. But personalities come to the church because they hear. I, I saw so much of this, it's just pure sickening to me. And I wonder what God does. Does he vomit? When he looks at people in pastorates areas, uh, and they'll hear of a young man, uh, most of the time it's young men, uh, and they'll hear about what kind of move they had in the church, and so they'll call them up, even though God has never said to them, have them come. It was just that their pastor said, my God, you need to get this young guy because he's got it going on, and he comes, and he still doesn't produce a revival, and you know why that happens? It's because they're looking for personalities uh, to fill the place of the Holy Ghost. Uh, oh God, let us return with the glory of God back in the house again, uh, where we'll shout again, where we'll be rejoicing again, uh, where conviction will hit the house, and people cannot sit in the service where they're at. Now I've been praying fire on you that are lost. <laughs> yeah, I have. I've been praying you can't sleep at night either. Yeah, yeah. I'm praying you'll get so sick. Yeah. I'd rather do that than you go to hell. Because how is it the church just gets so calmed down and so warm and backslid? It's because the glory is not past. And as long as I live, I said to God, don't please let me bring the glory with me. You know, God, I won't be able to stand it if I die without the glory on my life. The glory is more important to me than anything. Personality is our number one trait. The number two thing that we go to instead of God's glory is to the talents in the church. I'm going to share the story with you. I'm not going into details. I'm just going to tell you like it is. I was in a church and I was running a revival. And all day long I prayed and sought God for the message. And it was a hard, tough message. And I remember the name of it. It said, can God depend on you? I'll never forget that message. Because God began to share with the people of God. Can God depend on you when nobody else is standing by your side? And I preached about Micah. And him standing, even though 450 prophets said, Go on up, you'll win the battle. And Micah said, uh, uh, The Lord hadn't spoken to me about it. He told me, You're going to lose the battle. And, and the old wicked king said, uh, Oh, put him, I told you, I told you he never prophesied good things about me. <laughs> put him back in jail and give him bread and water until I return. And that's when the man of God said, if you return at all, it's more than I know. He didn't return either. He died in the battle. Listen, can God depend on you to say things when other people are shut mouth? Can God have you open up your mouth and say what needs to be said? Well, I was at this church, and it was a tough message, and I preached it. But that wasn't enough. The Holy Ghost had to turn and look at the pastor and say to him, uh, don't allow people up on the platform uh, that are not living right. 
uh, that are not living right uh, to play instruments. Uh, uh, they had a drummer uh, that would go to the bars. He was a young guy, and he'd go to the bars on the weekend, and he'd get drunk, but he'd come to church to play drums. It's getting quiet in here. I'm plowing deep here. And, and then they had the pianist, and, and she had a, a Jezebel spirit on her. Very wicked spirit on her. But because she could play, oh, she could play and sing. They put her right up on the piano, and even in her Jezebel spirit, controlling, dominating spirit, they still let her control the service. And God said to the pastor, can I depend on you not to allow spirits to get up there and do that? And behold, lo and behold, uh, it, it, it was like the word went over his head uh, uh, and she left for a little bit. But he went seeking after that same person again. Uh, and the church went down because the glory of God left it. Uh, I, I want to say this morning, I love everybody in this house, but God has got to be number one in this house or, or I just can't stay here. Amen. I cannot do what God wants me to do without His Lord. Don't get mad with me. Don't get upset with me. If you do, pray about it. I've prayed, I've fasted, I've saw God, I've tried my best to stay sensitive to the Spirit. But I cannot allow people that are not living right to be on this platform. I beg God to help me not to have to deal with it. When it comes to God's glory, I'm pretty tough. You ain't going to run over me when it comes to God's stuff. But there's just some issues that I'm, I'm really framing the altar. God, what's going to happen? And I don't want to have to do that. But I cannot allow people to be in positions of the church not living right. And you're doing your stuff in rebellion because you will not line up. Now I've been with you how long? Five months? And I have preached the gospel to you every service. And I don't know of one service except maybe two services that the glory of the God has come down in the house and I haven't been able to preach. You have had message after message after message. And you have got opportunity to repent. Don't blatantly put your sin in my face any longer. And more important, in God's face. Because God will judge us. See, we, we, we're too prone in the church. God help me. We're too prone in the church because we love people and we, we, we connect like family. And we are family. But understand anything in God's Word that condemns sin, what can I do but condemn it? And some people are going to have problems. The bigger we grow, the more people we have, there'll be corrections. Some people will have to leave the church, and they'll get mad with the pastor. Doesn't sin. It wasn't the person in sin, it's the pastor. But understand, I'm going to have God's glory if it kills me. Oh my God. I got to. Yeah. I can't live without it. I cannot do what I need to do for this church without God's glory. Do you hear me? I'm moving. Talents are great, but they cannot produce the glory in the house without the anointing. I mean, you can have singing groups come, and I'm going to go ahead and share this with the church. I think I shared it with you. But I'm not going to have just any singing group come to this church. Because I guard this pulpit, and I'm not going to have people standing up here that are smoking and dipping and chewing and cursing and swearing and doing all kinds of things just because you want to be entertained. Now, if you want to be entertained, go down yonder to the bar somewhere. But if you want the glory to come in the house, then come here. Because here is where you can get delivered. Here is where you can have healing at. Uh, uh, Pastor, do you love us? Yes, I sure do. Uh, but I'd rather see you in the glory than I had to see you in hell. Amen. Oh, God, give us the glory. God, we turn it back to the house again. Glory of God. Talents. Abilities. We're trying to produce heat with abilities. You might can do five things in this church and you might do it excellently. But ability will never create God's glory. I haven't got where I'm at. I know where I'm at. Abshag, I know about it. They got her. 
but her name says the fathers have erred. Oh Get that? The fathers erred. They were trying to produce heat in David, which was too old, oh my God. worn out, battle fatigued, to bring a young virgin in to try to produce heat to keep David warm. And there's some things the church just tried to keep. Oh, God, things burning in the church when it's been dead for oh. years. And it hadn't produced any kind of God's glory. It's tradition. We love tradition. Oh, God. Now, I like some traditions, but don't give me dead traditions. Oh, God. Just because we used to do it, oh, don't mean God wants it done now. Oh, I'm going to say this again. The more we grow the more some people are going to get sad, mad, and unglad. And they're going to leave. And they're going to say, I don't know what's wrong with our pastor. She don't ever want to do nothing. I want to do everything if it glorifies God. But if it don't glorify God, you got the wrong pastor. Because I'm just telling you, I'm not going to go with some dead tradition just because somebody's pouting and puffing and they want dead tradition. Well, being broadcast by the young yeah. <laughs> I've had people everywhere <laughs> texting and saying, boy, I sure am enjoying your preaching. I don't know whether I'll do it this week or not, but anyway. <laughs> Abilities to try to produce his glory. Let me just give you some traditions that the church does not want to die. If we're going to reach the masses in 2016, the age we're living in right now, as much as I love some of the old songs, and it's good, I love some of the old songs. Help me, God. Help me, God. Well, I just want to cry this morning. Well, go home and sing precious memories to yourself. <laughs> if you want to cry. Because what that produces is, you're an emotional man. Are you hearing me? The emotional man wants to hear precious memories. How they linger. How they ever flood my soul. In the midnight of my deep depression. Help me to remember mom and dad. <laughs> Mom and Dad, if they died in the faith, they're at home. We had a dear friend this morning again. This is six people that we love and care about that have died in two weeks. Sister Newell passed on this morning, the woman that we were praying for. I got the word this morning, and how broken I am, uh, because they were the pastors and had us in revival, and a precious woman of God. But you understand, I, I started crying, and then the Spirit said, what are you crying for? Gary, what are you, what are you crying for? Because oh, she's gone. The Spirit said, she's home. Oh, Isn't it amazing what the Scripture says? We're to cry when they come in, when they're born. And laugh when they go out. That's what it says. You can do it. You can do it. I mean, going home is where I'm going. And I ain't talking about on 15040 U.S. Highway 19 South either. I'm talking about my eternal home. And who knows, it might be the day when the rapture takes place. But I've been preparing myself for 60 years, and yes, I'm, I'm going home. Don't weep for me when I go. I didn't struggle too long. I'll be shot on the other side. You might have to help Brother Braswell and the Grands out, but they'll get on with it. Amen? And if he goes before I do, you'll have to pray for me too because I'll have to get on with it too. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I'll be able to do it. With the Spirit. Where am I at? Tradition. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Precious memories is good to work you emotionally up. But something like we had this morning, if you were really understanding what the Spirit was saying, Holy. Oh, yeah. Holy. Uh, yeah. Well, if you can't do that, I'm sorry, because when we get to heaven, 24 elders are already saying, Holy. Yeah. Holy. 
Holy is the Lord God Almighty. When we be home to Him, I doubt we'll be able to say a thing. We, we always say, I th- I, when I enter the doors of God's glory in heaven, I'm going to run around and find Mama and Daddy and Shelby, and, and I'm just going to shout, and I'm going to sit down and talk to Timothy and, and Paul for about a thousand years. No, I'm not. I, I doubt I'll do that. Probably when I hit the gates, I'll say, Oh, holy God. Holy God. Holy God, because the one that died for me. And why can't the church get out of tradition and get into His glory? Quit trying to reduce His glory and men's abilities to work you up. Do I dare say this? I believe I will. The reason why some of you are in depression is because you all you've listened to all week long is that country whining, dying, music. I'm sitting at the bar and the tears are flowing cause Mary's left me hanged on with Bill. I don't know why I'm saying this morning, but I don't do that kind of stuff. I just get it on every morning. Why is it that we get into that stuff? I mean, I'm not saying there are some love songs that are pure that you can listen to. That is, if you're married. Don't rouse the old flesh, though. Hello? Uh, hello, anybody out there? Yeah? I mean, what we do is arouse the flesh. Listening to that kind of stuff. You cannot listen to that kind of music and then not pierce your heart and go right into the spirit man and arouse the flesh and cause sexual activity that is displeasing to God if you're not married. Now, when me and Brother Christ will celebrate our 50th wedding anniversary, which is coming to make you, he might not sing it, but we're going to sing it. We're going to have it. Oh, my love, my darling, yeah, hunger for your touch. I need it alone. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful love song. If you don't know, it's called Unchained Melody by the Righteous Brothers. Yeah. How'd you know that? I looked it up and I heard him sing it on the on the deck of from Vietnam. He said, This is the most beautiful song I ever heard. And the other day I sued that and I just listened to the whole thing and I said, Wow. Okay. I'm moving. There are some things that you can listen to that that's all right with God. There's so much that God says that's a sin. And we have shoved it to the side and we've said, I'm going to have this because I don't care about God's glory. And if the church doesn't come back to the knees, back to the altars, and back where the fire's at, we'll never be able to have the heat of the glory of God that lost men and women can walk into this church until conviction fires on. I was in Perry, Georgia, probably 15 years ago now, maybe, uh, for revival. This young lady that had been there every night came to church that night, and she brought a young man with him, with her, and he was as drunk as he could be. She said, "This friend has been drinking all day, but I wanted to bring him." Then I said, "Hallelujah." Why do you say that? Because in God's glory, anybody can be delivered. See, the church used to believe that. Anybody could be delivered. And he was so drunk that he didn't even know what his name was. And I said, hey, and he introduced himself, and I said, hey, I'm so blessed that you're here. I'm the evangelist. And I spoke to him, and he sat down, and he didn't create an issue or nothing. He just sat there. He was quiet until the altar call. When the altar call came, he was the first one to hit the altar. And I knelt down in front of him, and, and I said, I want to pray with you. He said, I, 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 I know I'm drunk. He said, but I've tried everything in the world. He said, I, I've tried drugs and alcohol, sexual immorality. I've tried it all. I've had highs, but I ain't never felt nothing like I feel in here. And so he's bending over the altar and he looks up at me and he said, 
And two, they told me there was a big chick over here. <laughs> and can get the job done. I'm saying chick. <laughs> He's talking about me. Gee. Okay. I finally got this. <laughs> well, you got one thing right. I am big, but I can't do it. That's what I said. I said the cock is. Brother Brad was sitting right there, so help me God. The Lord saved that young man and dried him up. And he was not drunk or not one dab when he left the house. You know what produced that young kid was the glory of God. So when men and women walk in here drug addicted and bound up in alcohol and sexual immorality, they ought to feel a conviction that would draw them to the altars to get saved. That's what I'm praying for. Because that's the only way it's going to work. I'm moving. Have you noticed all the substitutes we have today? Programs, talents, abilities. Even money's talk instead of God's glory. Churches that are big that have tons of money will say, hey, let's hire the biggest and the best and the most known and let's just bring them in. And they will produce. No, they won't. You might produce people sitting on a pew, but you won't produce the glory. The glory only comes when people have a hunger. And they begin to search after God. And they begin to seek after God and go up that secret staircase. And get in his presence. And find their beloved. And get connected with him. And him with them. And they begin to talk with him. And they begin to fall in love with him. They get so in love with him. Until nothing else matters. They drop all things. Except his glory and presence. Did, did you know. Have you ever saw that happen to people. That never knew God. That had never met God. That had been raised up in church. And a lot of times when we get used to this, people that are in race and Pentecost, we, we see them coming to the altars over and over and over and over. I have nothing against that. If you have to stay on the altar to get to heaven, do it. But I believe there's a place where you can get saved, get cleaned up, get purified, get the flame of the Holy Ghost, and you can eat the wood, the Word of God, and flame that blaze. And the spirit will just drop that dross off of you. And you will no longer long for the things of the world. But you will begin to seek after him and his glory. How many times has his glory came down uh, and the word of God? And, and look at this. When God's glory came down, it was either when they were sacrificing to him. Sacrificing right offerings. Sacrifices. Praise, worship, he came down in his glory. Oh, yeah. Does that tell you anything? You and I need to be worshipers. Oh, yeah. I said we need to be worshipers. Oh, yeah. we, don't, we don't need people to be cheerleaders, spiritual cheerleaders. Oh, right. Hello, everybody stand, clap your hands, raise your hands, shout a little bit. If you ain't got any shouting, you don't shout. But if you've been saved by the blood of the Lamb, then you ought to have a shout in your soul. You ought to say, Dear God, I was lost, but now I am found. Amen. There is something about God and His glory that produces such heat. And what the church has done is we have erred. Because we have made people believe that you, the bigger the programs, the more the glory will be. And God said, You can have all the programs you want. But if you don't have me, you're disconnected oh, to the source of the heat. Yeah. Remember what I said to you Friday night about the fires on the altars of God. Remember what it said in the Bible that Solomon started off well. He started off well. Wisest man that ever lived. I, I mean, he had everything. He said, I, I, I've tried it all. I, I've got it all. He said, but in the end, it's vanity of vanities. And what was his famous quote? He said, serve God while you're young. Youth, remember God in your youth. Why? Because when you get older, you get more weaker. When mom was living, 
She's probably chuckling herself to death right now. She was here with me. When I say, Mama, you were right about it all. <laughs> Anybody see the little cartoon that was on the Facebook the other day? It said, when you are 10, you trust in your mom's advice. When you get 16, there is nothing you don't know. <laughs> when you get 18, nobody can tell you nothing. When you get dirty, mom is there to console you. And you say, I'm understanding a little bit more now, mom. When you get 50, you're saying, mom, you are not as ignorant as I thought you were. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? They haven't been down the road, so they know. They know what's ahead. If young people and young women and young wives would listen to the sound advice of the older women, you wouldn't struggle so much in your marriage. You'd find your right husband and you wouldn't have frozen, <coughs> frozen milk. <laughs> now what man wants a frozen milk? That warmed up my mouth away. Now, they might tell you they like it, but it ain't true. <laughs> what they want is a good old fried chicken, Steak. homemade Steak. mashed potatoes, good old homemade biscuits with tons of gravy. <laughs> I do too. I like it. Hello? I mean, who is it that don't? Now, Brother Braswell didn't get the size he is, or neither did I with us eating TV dinners. <laughs> Isn't that right, baby? I used to, I, when we were first married, uh, he said to me later, he said, I, I believe that, uh, that you was just gonna wash the whole floor away. Because every day you would mop and wax. Of course, I was taught that. I can't stand clutter. I cannot stand clutter. Hello. Now, Brother Razzle, <clears throat> I love you, sweet baby. <laughs> Brother Brazel <laughs> was a cook, and is a cook, yeah. and can cook, but he ain't got KP's cleaning up for him. <laughs> I mean, he gets a pot this big to cook macaroni on that side. And he said, well, who's washing up the dishes? You are. <laughs> and he does. Are you really saying that, Pastor? Yes, because I can't do what I'm doing. Unless he do, does what he does. Oh, he's as much of a man as any man in this place. I mean, he was a professional meat cutter for 27 years. He knows the business about meat cutting. But he's just as humble as he can be. And he'll just cook and cook and cook and take care of you first and everybody else first and clean up everything. And then he'll come and sit down. Just the way he is. So some of you young women, I just thank the Holy Ghost today because he's just putting this stuff in me. And uh, if you saw my notes, you wouldn't have believed I'd even preach today. Seriously. If some of you young women would just listen to the advice, you can't push nothing off on anybody. I mean, if you're bossy, get over it. You can't do it. You have to gently help them along. Who in the world wants somebody always manipulating, controlling, and dominating? Uh, them to get them to do what they need to do. See, you can't do it. You have to say, here's what you really need to do, and you have to leave it alone. I don't, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. I'm closing. It's 10 to 12, in case you want to know. <laughs> Abishag is, is the one in the Word of God that could lay side of David and keep him warm, but couldn't produce that heat. Hear me. You can let anything lay beside you, and you can cuddle it and entertain it, but it will not produce the glory of God unless you've got God in your life. And God said, in my glory, in my glory, there's evidence that I've been there. Now, he comes and goes, but in the glory, it stays. Have you noticed people, and I'm praying for this church, that what's going to happen is we have two wheelchairs in the back. Brother Gene occupied the first one because he was too drunk. He couldn't get out by himself, so we had to 
What do you, what do you, Sister Brenda? Huh? Both of you? Both of you, right. That's why the team, we had to roll out. What I'm praying is God to bring us about five more chairs back there. And some of you that are sitting and looking at me, like, Pastor, you don't really think I'm going to be laid out, do you? Absolutely. <laughs> I believe the Lord's going to be so strong in here till you're going to fall. It is glory. You're not going to care who saw you do it. You're not even going to care how you got down there. You're just going to say, dear God, can somebody roll me out? I I'm sorry. <laughs> Wouldn't it be awesome if the glory came so strong in the house till all we had to do was just say he's in the house? And people that have such healings that they need in their bodies will stand up and begin to scream and holler, Oh my God, I've just been healed. My, my ear was deaf, but I can heal. I was blind and decided I could see. Sister Brenda has lost her cane. She don't need it. She ain't literally lost it, but she got it. Yeah, amen. She's not it. Have you noticed she don't come into church with a cane? She walks everywhere now without a cane. I'm believing for some of you that need miracles in your body. That the glory is going to be so strong. And the hot fervency of the fire of God. It's going to burn through this house. And it's going to penetrate us. And cause us to stand in his glory and his presence. And be taken up into realms we've never been to before. If the heart of the pastor is after anything at all, it's for his glory. To manifest in this house in such a strong way. Yeah. If it happened in Azusa Street, if it happened at other revivals, why can't it happen here? If people are yielded to the Spirit and believe God for the impossible, it can happen. Yeah. Abishag is the era of the fathers. What they thought would produce heat for David ended up not producing. Understand? The errors of the church, when we stand in strong ways to keep producing heat, are trying to produce it. And it doesn't produce. We need to throw it to the side and say, God, come in this house in the strong glory of your presence. You remember what happened, don't you? That glory that we're talking about, God on Peter. And it's very shadow as he passed by. Oh, yeah. People were healed. would it be awesome if you got glory on you today? You went out to eat at a restaurant somewhere. And somebody just passed by you and they felt the healing touch of the hand of God. Wouldn't it be awesome if the glory of God was on you so strong that when you left here and you went home to all those lost family members. And they said, oh God, there is something that is different about you that I've never seen in your life before. It's the glory of God. It's the beam of his presence that comes upon us in such a way we're forever transformed in his glory. Forever changed in his glory. I want to share this with you before we go. I'll talk to you about the glory. Because I went to a church and it was my second revival after God had called me to preach. And I went to this revival, and the pastor at that time didn't have the, the modern up-to-date thing, so you know you'll be staying with us, Sister Brazel in the house. And they got a room set aside for me, and I went in that room and stayed there with them. The Lord had me stay two weeks there with them at the church. And I got up and went over to the church, which was next door to the parsonage. And when I walked into the church, and I got inside the vestibule, I felt this strong presence of demonic activity. And as I started walking through the vestibule into the sanctuary, that spirit started following me. And I started rebuking. Fear came on me for a few minutes because it was so... Such a strong presence of demonic activity. And I turned and started walking this way 
toward that spirit and started rebuking that spirit and binding that spirit and moving out back out into the vestibule and binding other spirits and praying over the walls, not even understanding what had been going on in the vestibule area. There was literally, later found out, a literal fist fight in the vestibule of the church. Someone before this pastor had put up like demonic portraits in the vestibule. Listen to me. And those spirits started entertaining the house. Started coming to the house. So as I started praying and seeking God, I'd come over every day and I'd spend time in His presence and, and they started moving out. And one night the Lord was moving in the house and God began to deal in a strong way. And there was a man sitting on the back row on that side. I'll never forget it. As the day is long, he was sitting on the back row and boy was he having a time back there with the youth. They were giggling and laughing and cutting up back there. And I mean, he was just having his stuff time. He was about 35. He was having his stuff time. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, tell him to come come let me pray for him and I looked at him and I said sir will you allow me to pray for you and he said no <clears throat> and so I backed up about like I am here but I went down the aisle there and I said sir the Lord wants to, to touch you and I said no and he shook his head and I backed up a little bit more and I turned and the spirit said turn around and tell him if he doesn't come tonight he's going to bust hell wide open now brother Bradley was there that night Later, he confessed, he was saying, now, David, that guy is a big guy. And I don't want to have to mess with him. <laughs> if he gets up and starts coming your way now, I don't want to have to mess with him. Because he was over 300 pounds, and he was about six foot. And he just looked at me. And the Spirit told me to go right back where he was at. And I went right back and got right over him in front. And I whispered to him and I said, The Lord just told me to tell you that the woman that you're having an affair with, God said, Your wife's going to find it out and you're going to have a divorce in your marriage. And he went, His eyes got big. All of a sudden he broke down and started weeping. He wept and wept. He gave his heart to God. He got sanctified. And he got filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and then a laughing spirit came on him. Now get this picture. He's over 300 something pounds. He's sitting down. And he looked like Santa Claus when he went to laughing. <laughs> Just like that. His stomach was cool. <laughs> And the joy of the Lord got on that guy. I didn't know that that was the pastor's son. God called him to preach, and he's been preaching ever since. That's been 20, 26 years ago. I, I just, I, that, glory does that. Not a man. God, glory does that. So don't you think God's able to do what you need him to do today? Brother Harold uh, is such a loving guy, and he forever forever just loves me and if he ever gets a chance on Facebook he'll say, Sister Bradwell, I cannot believe that you are in Griffin. I gotta come that way and see you. And I said, come on, come on. I'll even get you to preach for me. Because the Lord got on that guy and saved him and in that in that revival before God finished with it, he, his wife was sitting on the front row, which I didn't know was his wife at the time. She was sitting on the front row. He was sitting on the back row with an affair with another woman. And before the revival was over, when he was sitting on the front with her, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, called the priest, the gospel, and hugging and kissing on his wife. Mm -hmm. Now, that's what God would do. That's what God would do. It, it, somebody didn't get that, I don't think. Because yeah, I don't care how bad they are unsaved, how much in bondage they are. It only takes a wave of his glory. Amen. That's why prostitutes and alcoholics and drug addicted people in, in the day of Azusa Street Revival, they closed the bars. 
and the prostitute houses. And they ended up in the church with the fire over the house, burning inside, and they would fall into the service. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Stand if you don't want to keep preaching, but I'm feeling this all over me. If the glory of God can be manifested like that, then it is manifested now. I'm not going to talk about the old days. I'm going to tell you that in, in the churches I pastored, I just demanded from God that, Lord, you said I can have the glory. And God, I don't want nothing less than the glory. Were people carnal? Yes. Were some people upset because of the glory got to fall in some people started coming to the church. What I prayed for was, I said, God, send me the black, the white, red, yellow, homosexuals, lesbians, prostitutes. I don't care. God, just send them. Just send them. And God started sending them. And some people that said, I'm, I'm ready to go with God. And if he was to come to the center right now, I'd go. Really? They showed themselves. Because God started bringing in people they did not like and didn't look like them, act like them. And so they got all upset and upstirred and could not reach into the glory. I'm going to proclaim to this church one more time. People's going to come into this house. They're going to come sick, anemic, weak, broken, devastated, lonely, Bound, broken, healers in the house. And you and I must be silent when people come walking into this place. They have not been in church like you. And I'm expecting that people to walk in here that has never been in the house before. And when they're not they're been in the church, they're not going to act like we act, look like we act, or do anything like we do. Why do we judge people? When God says, if my glory is in the house, I'll bring them. And they can be delivered. They can be healed in His presence. Will you join with me as a church right here for a moment? And let us pray, God, as we've been praying from the north, south, east, and west, to bring them into this house. And we just preach the word with the glory of God. And people get convicted and get saved and get delivered. That your heart's cry in his mind. Well, yeah. so, God, I can't fix them. You can. But I'm going to love them, God, because that's what my responsibility is. I'm going to love them unconditionally. I'm going to love them so much they're going to either come back here to this house or they're going to go somewhere else. They're going to say, I've never felt such love. I want them to say that because I want to put it on their lives. I've never felt such love. Pray with me right here, church, that God's glory will fill that place. He will fill this place with His glory. Bring them in. Come on, I want you to pray right now with me. I want you to pray out loud. Come on, pray. You prayer warriors, I want you to pray right now. If you don't mean it, don't pray it. But you should be wanting that to happen right here. God, fill this house with your glory. God, fill it so full that people will be right by them Sunday morning and Sunday night. Thursday night, oh God. And they'll feel a drawing in the Spirit. They'll feel a fire, oh God. They'll see it on the house. Over the tabernacle. God, they'll long to come inside and find out what it's all about. God, when they get inside, they won't want they will stay. They will stay close to the heat of the fire of the glory of God. They'll stay so close to it, God, until conviction will get a hold of them and save them. Will deliver them and heal their broken lives. God, we're in such a turmoil, and God, in America, and in the churches, oh God, where deadness has been. May the church, God, not just go through the ashes, but oh God, may we have a fresh fire burning on the altar of our heart. A fire, oh God, that will penetrate the darkness. God, that will move the hand of the enemy back out of the way. God, that will produce such a fire in the spirit that will cause the sick to be healed. The lame to get up and walk. Dead to rise up. Deafness to be open. Blinded eyes open, God. That the church will grow and go so close to your presence. And 
fire, oh God, till our faces will shine like Moses with the glory of God. God, clothe us in your glory. Clothe us in your glory, God. Take us into the depth of that spirit, God. God, every issue we're dealing with will go right on out, God, as we come close to the fire of your glory. All of our brokenness and our depression and our pain and our, our headaches and both broken bones in our flesh will be healed in the spirit. Come on, church, right where you're at. The glory of God is here. I know it's here. I want you to lift your hands up, whatever you need. Receive it right now in Jesus' presence. God, I need your healing. I need your healing. I need your deliverance, God. I, I need restoration in my life. God, I, I want those things to be broken over me, God. I need you, Lord. I can't do it by myself. Bring me, God, close into the fire. Come on, church, pray. Pray, keep your hands up. Just give God time right here to work. Come on, if you're tired, if you're not feeling well, or you're Start praying in the Spirit. Let God touch you so you'll have faith to pray right now for people that are here with their hands up and need help. 